Hello, hello! Hello, everybody. Welcome on back to the stream. I hope y'all are doing well. Happy Saturday! Everyone's having a good weekend. This is a cat who was like, Oh, I heard you were going live, and I have not been getting enough internet fame! And therefore, he has now jumped up on the desk and is here for you. All you lovely, beloved people on the cat cam. There we go. That's what's happening. Okay, I know, I know, I know. All right. We're gonna switch over, though. Wait for it. And the cat cam back on, too. Oh, come on. There we go. There I am. Hello. Welcome back, everybody. Ooh. I had the lighting down on point when I started this, I swear. And now it's all... There we go. <laughs> Look, sometimes it just has issues. But yeah, hope everyone's doing well. Hope you guys are having a great start to your weekend. It is Saturday. What a lovely, lovely day. Um, we are going to start case four here. Here, hold up. Don't need that right now. All right, let's get into the game here. We can talk a little bit about the plan. Ooh. Continue. We are starting the adventure of the clouded Kokoro. And Kokoro, I know, does mean heart, so... I assume this means we're going into this with a cloudy heart because we don't know what's going on. Our client last time we thought was just, you know, like a rich philanthropist who maybe gets his money by extorting people with outrageous bones as a loan shark. You can see Momo on two cameras, that's wild. Um. <laughs> I know. Hi. Hi. Hello. <laughs> um. Yeah, actually, we're. We thought he was innocent. It seemed pretty, you know, possible that he didn't kill a man. He was sleeping. So, you know, that's kind of weird. But then he. To make sure that he got off the hook. Because the jury, first of all, not really well vetted. A lot of them very definitely prejudice one way or another against or for rich people <laughs> so it's like okay the jury vetting system clearly was not a thing just yet yes hi can i help you um oh yeah that was the thing so he basically planted false evidence to try to get himself off the hook um he tampered with the the, the the scene of the crime, which was wheeled into the courthouse. He took things out, and then he put things in. Um, it was all very, very sketchy. So we don't know what to think. What is justice at this point? Um, and the prosecutor definitely doesn't have a you know high opinion of defense attorneys, of course. It's like, oh, you're always trying to get people off the hook. You know, kind of. That's that's not new at all. That's pretty much the same uh, reaction we get out of most people um but you know he's starting to see like okay okay i see it's not necessarily about getting your client off the hook even though that's part, kind of partly your job it's about finding the truth so respect we're setting some precedents here so yeah we just gotta watch uh our dear beloved protagonist leonosuke naruhodo the ancestor to phoenix right uh, also known as Ryuichi Naruhodo in Japanese, so yeah, yeah that's, that's where the name comes from. Um, we gotta see him start building his legacy, I guess you could say. Alright, so here we go. Episode 4! The Adventure of the Clouded Kokoro. My I begin to today. think we'll see, said Shilmans, turning his head languidly in my direction. That there is more to this case than that which we have observed. Indeed, that there may be another part to this story that we are yet to discover. His eyes wandered, following the steam rising from his cup of herbal tea. Herbal. Leading him to the distant memory of that snowy evening. To the young lady collapsed on the pavement along Briar Road, and to the knife in her back. 
lit in the soft glow of gas lamps, a most extraordinary scene had been set. And under the cover of a light fog, the curtain had risen silently on the insoluble mystery of our invisible killer. Okay, so obviously continuing on with murder. 19th of February, 9.47 a.m., the British Supreme Court Lord Chief Justice's Office. Did you sleep last night, Mr. Narahodo? No, not at all. It was an enormous hotel, wasn't it? The rooms were so luxurious. I felt like we were staying in a palace. And with all the gas lights twinkling, it was brighter than day, even in the middle of the night. What about the enormous beds? After my time on the SS Budia, I wasn't gonna waste a single inch of that space. I spent the entire night rolling from one side of the mattress to the other. Oh yes, it really was the sort of night you can only dream of normally. Except... When I learned that we owed three pounds for the rooms, that dream quickly turned into a nightmare. Oops, sorry about that. The building was so impressive and the entrance so inviting, I just wandered in without thinking. In a lodging in ha in a lodging house in Japan, that sum of money would put a roof over your head for a whole year. Oof. They went to a pricey hotel. I did try, but I'm afraid I couldn't help my tears when we were presented with a bill. Ugh, I really am sorry. Well, never mind. We must find some more affordable lodging straight away, though. If we're not careful, our entire stipend will be used up in ten days or less. Ugh, London is a scary place. Ah, good morning to you at this early hour. Oh, yes, uh, uh <clears throat> we, uh, well... Good morning to you, Lord Chief Justice. We have come to report on the outcome of the trial at the Old Bailey yesterday. <clears throat> Desata sounds amazing. She doesn't bat an eyelid even in the presence of the imposing Lord Strongheart. Yes, I believe you had a very comprehensive initiation into British courtroom practices. Oh, yes, uh, it was very eye-opening. Thank you. And in accordance with your instructions, Lord Strongheart, Mr. Nanahodo performed his duty to the end. Yes, I've already been apprised of the events. You conducted a remarkable defense. You may consider the test passed. Oh! No longer are you a student from the Empire of Japan. You may henceforth claim to be a fully-fledged lawyer. My country is delighted to welcome young talent from such a remote eastern land. Let me move the cat cam. A little less in the way. Um, thank you very much. So, I'm a lawyer now. Now, in view of your new appointment, I have a fresh case in mind for you. I'd like you to take it on at once. I trust that won't be a problem. Another case? Already? We do need the money. Nothing trains a, lo trains a lawyer better than practical experience. I'm sure I don't sense dissatisfaction, do I? It's just that yesterday's trial ended unusually. I, I, I haven't quite come to terms with it. What's to come to terms with? The man was cleared. What more were you hoping for? The culpability of the defendant has not at the present time been established by this court. Consequently, the jury will not be required to prefer judgment. Well, Lord Van Zeeks, it's been a pleasure, so it has. And as for you, my dear fella, I couldn't have asked for a better defense.
Yeah, that's very suspicious. <laughs> Super suspicious. I just can't help wondering if Mr. McGilded really was innocent. Mr. Naruhodo! It's just that I never managed to ascertain the truth. And then the trial ended. Well, you needn't let it trouble you for a second longer. Oh, there goes the cat. Sorry? <laughs> what do you mean, Lord Strongheart? Uh-oh. There we go. <gasps> Magnus McGilded passed away immediately following the trial. He, was he the one who was stuck in the carriage? I thought he's the one who set it on fire. I didn't know he was the one in there. Oh. That's awkward. No! What? M Mr. Mr. McGilded is... dead? Well, that's not good. I have 19 minutes and 41 seconds until my next engagement. Time enough to talk. Do explain. Excuse me? I don't understand. What happened? How can he be dead? After the trial concluded yesterday, there was a great commotion in the old bailey. As you'll presumably recall, an omnibus had been wheeled into the courtroom. Yes, of course. That was the scene of the crime which Mr. McGilded had been accused of. Precisely. Well, while the bailiff's attention was diverted by some other matter, the omnibus went up in flames. No. How could such a thing have happened? That is being investigated as we speak, but already. Police have identified a corpse found inside the charred shell of the carriage as that of Mr. McGilded. That's awful! The man must have slipped inside whilst the bailiff's attention was elsewhere. That bailiff really needs to pay more attention. How could that have happened? That is also being investigated as we speak. Thinking back now... Immediately after the trial, Mr. McGilded did mention going back into the courtroom to look at the omnibus. I must be making tracks now. It's time for the inspection. Uh, sorry, what inspection? They're going to examine the omnibus again, so I'm told. I asked if I could be present for it myself. Inspection of the omnibus? Not to my knowledge. I don't believe Scotland Yard had any intention of re-examining the carriage. But then who was Mr. McGilded talking about? Never mind that now. The Yard's making a thorough investigation. This matter is no longer any concern of yours. Leave it to the police. Poor Mr. McGilded. Oof. Alright, let's talk about the court. Something off of my tea does not taste good. <clears throat> so, how did you find your first taste of our country's Supreme Court? Oh, well, um, I, I don't know. It, I mean, it was- Wow! Wow! Mr. Narahodo means that the whole experience is steeped in the solemnity of Great Britain's long history. Oh, wait, hold up. I gotta do a thing. trying it really it, it's really a world apart from our own judicial system in japan which is only a few short decades old wow satasan has such a way with words and you seem to have a way of failing to find the right ones wait did i say that out loud i don't think i did 
The judicial system here is the most advanced in the world. Learn all you can. The most advanced in the world, is it? It was fortunate. That your very first trial was a simple affair. Simple? That was simple? As I believe I mentioned yesterday morning, it was a trial you couldn't lose. I don't mean to be contrary, Lord Strongheart, but... The case was anything but simple. The circumstances of the case were so incriminating, I was stunned when I first heard them. In fact, I'm still finding it hard to believe that we managed to get a favorable verdict. <laughs> Did you bribe the judge? Are you paying the judge? Is... is something funny? No, no. My apologies. However, the fact is that you did receive the not guilty verdict you set out to achieve. Okay, I'm really suspicious of this guy. And that can only be attributed to exceptional talent, wouldn't you agree? Well, I, I don't know about that. Well, never mind. You exceeded my expectations, I freely admit. That much, at least, is an undeniable truth. Which is precisely why I prepared the new case for you that I mentioned before. What's going on? What was he going to say before? Alright, tell me about the new case. <laughs> Could you perhaps give us some more details about the new case you mentioned? Don't tell me, it's a murder. And the trial starts in 10 minutes. Don't worry, it's nothing so alarming or quite so urgent as your last assignment. Good! I don't believe you, but alright. In fact, this case is completely different. Oh, I see. Did... Did you just read my mind, or do I, like, talk out loud when I'm thinking? Because that's weird. That is to say, no one has died as yet. Okay. And the trial will not be today. There's plenty of time to research the case thoroughly. Alright, that's good. 23 hours, 43 minutes, and 19 seconds to be precise. Ah, uh, so the trial's tomorrow then. Is everything alright? Oh, yes, I'm just a little confused, that's all. Yesterday's trial was... Well, it's left me wondering if I'm really cut out for being a lawyer. Oh, Mr. Naruhodo. I don't know if I could face standing in that courtroom again after Mr. McGilded's trial. Hmm. Ah, yes. I nearly forgot. There is one similarity with yesterday's case. Once again, there is currently no one to advocate for the defense. Oh. The situation remains unchanged. The trial will start tomorrow with the defendant unrepresented. When that happens, I need not remind you of the inevitable outcome. The most terrible end awaits the defendant. Yes, that's right. Uh, here we go again. But I thought, you know, it's not a murder this time, so it can't be that bad. Your time is up. You'll have to excuse me. I would advise you to begin making preparations for tomorrow's trial. After all, the clock is ever ticking. There is now but 23 hours, 26 minutes, and 39 seconds until the court sits. Last time you mentioned 23 hours, you said there was plenty of time. And one more thing, Mr. Naruhodo. There is something I should like to ask you. Oh, um, what's that? Yesterday, you remarked upon something. That you intend to see through the will of your late compatriot, Mr. Asogi. Yes, and? 
I would be interested to hear what exactly you mean by that. Inside 34 seconds. Oh, well, um, Kazuma always used to say, you see, that he wanted to learn how the greatest justice system in the world worked so he could change ours in Japan. Now that he's gone, I'd like to work towards that myself. And there's another thing. Oh. Another thing. Continue. On the way here on the steamship, he said something to me. There's something very important. There's something very important I ha that I have to do. Something very important? And what exactly would that be? He never had a chance to tell me. I suppose he would have done if he'd ever made it to the Great Britain to Great Britain. We're out of time. Well, thank you for an enlightening discussion. Mr. Nanahodo, what's all this about? Mr. Soki never once mentioned anything of the sort to me. I urge you both to focus your attentions on the matter at hand. I've taken the liberty of summoning the police inspector in charge of the case. He'll be able to apprise you of the details. How, how long has he been standing there? So, I wish you the best of luck and bid you farewell. <sighs> There's something very important that I have to do? Azuma Samaha, what did you mean? I wish I knew, but honestly, he never told me. <clears throat> anyway, we'd better talk to that detective, don't you think? Yes, you're right. I hope I'm just imagining it, but I wouldn't say he looks pleased to see us at all. Are those fries, by which I mean chips? <clears throat> Who eats those like that? They just keep magically reappearing. It's amazing, actually. Um, could we trouble you? What do you think? Oh, hold on. What do you... Hmm... Policey voice. What do you think? Uh, ah! Um, uh... Lovely weather, isn't it? What's the weather got to do with anything? Uh... Listen to me, you young Japanese upstart! Some flippery about the weather doesn't get every English gent eaten out of your hand, you know. Uh, but Sasato-san told me it was foolproof. <clears throat> I'm a vis busy man, a very busy man. There's a, cr there's a crime scene to investigate, but I'm here having to give the likes of you a talking to. Oh, I'm ever so sorry. Can you imagine what the other officers there will be saying? Hmm? Haven't seen Gregson anywhere, have you? No, he's too busy with the bigwigs these days. Not because of some bumpkin who's here on a jaunt from a country I've never even heard of. Hear that ripping sound? That's my reputation at the yard going to tatters. There's no need to rip us apart as well. I don't believe we've been introduced. This is Mr. Ryunosuke Naruhodo, a defense lawyer. Eh? It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. I'm Mr. Narahodo's judicial assistant. So, Eh? It's lovely weather we're having today, isn't it? <clears throat> it is unseasonably fine, I grant you. London winters don't see a lot of sunshine. Unbelievable. How did she pull that off? So, <clears throat> Lord Strongheart has asked me to fill you in on the case. My name's Tobias Gregson. Inspector Gregson to you. I'm from Scotland Yard. Gregson? 
Um, Inspector Gregson? What's the matter with Susato-san? Does this detective's name mean something? Wait, what was it again? I don't know. Wait, is he the... Is he related to Herlock Sholmes? Inspector, are you perhaps the Inspector Gregson? You're acting like you know this man, Mrs. Sato, but he's a London detective. Oh, I do know him very well, in fact. Very well? Yes, he features prominently in the adventures of Herlock Sholmes. Oh, and that publication. What's it called again? Ranst Magazine? That's right! Inspector Gregson and Mr. Sholmes enjoy a wonderfully friendly ri rivalry. Really? You rival the great Mr. Sholmes? That's incredible. Oh, um, well, I don't know about that. Mr. Sholmes isn't a professional like my myself, myself, of course, but he does come up with the goods from time to time. Mr. Sholmes is equally complimentary about you, Inspector, isn't he? You, you've earned his highest praise. Gregson is the pick of a bad lot of all the Scotland Yarders. Those were his own words. That's his highest praise? Well, Mr. Sholmes isn't particularly known for giving compliments, you see. That he is not. Thanks to that magazine, my name's known all over London town now. That's great, isn't it? Huh. Have to admit that to start with, I was a little, well, flattered by all the attention. Everyone wanted to shake my hand, and my reputation at the yard went through the roof. Well, that's wonderful! No, it is not! There's nothing more sinister than the man on the street! People are always looking at me now. They're whispering rumors about me under their breath, I'm sure. <coughs> Sorry, I just sneeze. All right, hold on one second, one second. Okay, sorry, I had to blow my nose. All right, camera, do your thing. Come back. There we go. We're back, we're back. All good. Rumors? Are, are you quite sure? He's changed since he started appearing in those stories. Fame's gone to his head, stuff like that. Gosh, do you really think people are saying such mean-spirited things about you? Like, hair stuck on my face. Like I said. Oh, shit. Wait. Wait. I lost OBS for a second. Okay, I don't think it affected Twitch. I think we're okay. Uh-oh. Nope. Hold on. Is very unstable right now. But it looks like I'm still okay on Twitch, so I We'll go we'll go until I see it pop off. Alright. Interesting. That's concerning. Obvious is having a time. <laughs> like I said, they whisper. So I can't catch exactly what they're saying, but I know what folk are like. Uh -huh. 
I'm sure that what's... I'm sure that's what they're saying, as sure as eggs is eggs! I get the feeling that this detective could be very hard work. Oh dear. Perhaps fame does... Perhaps a sudden rise to, to fame does change people. Alright, let's talk about the case. <clears throat> So, um, about the case that the Lord Chief Justice mentioned before. Nothing to tell, really. As far as we are concerned, at the yard, it couldn't be simpler. Oh dear, that probably means... that as far as we're concerned as lawyers, it couldn't be more complicated. I wish you were wrong about that, but I have a nasty feeling you're right. A young woman was walking along the pavement on Briar Road when she was stabbed from behind. Fortunately, it wasn't fatal, but she's still laid up in the hospital unconscious. That's despicable! What sort of coward would attack a poor woman from behind? I suppose you would have finished whoever... I suppose you would have finished whoever it was off with the Sasato takedown, wouldn't you? <clears throat> that is neither here nor there, Mr. Naruhodo. Brace yourself, Yunosuke. You've angered her now. Anyway, after something of a whirlwind investigation, the criminal was arrested. Barely had time for a cup of tea after the incident took place, to be honest. So, there must have been something left of the scene that led you directly to the culprit? Or perhaps a reliable witness who recognized the person in question? Let me stop you right there. You're wasting your time on this one. Uh, sorry? There's nothing you can do. There's no way to help the bloke now. Why ever not? <clears throat> Simple. Prosecutor that's been assigned to the trial tomorrow is Lord Baron Van Zeeks. Ow! On again, who could have seen this coming? Sounds like you've heard of him then. Oh yes, we are very familiar with Lord Van Zeeks. Believed to be the harbinger of death itself. The Reaper of the Bailey. <clears throat> Let's talk about that some more, shall we? Lord Baron Van Zeeks, who we faced in court only yesterday. Mr. McGildas told us about him before the trial, didn't he? And Van, Z and Van Zeeks stands for the prosecution. They call the accused as sacrificial lambs. And in every single trial in which he's been the prosecutor, the accused has been damned. The Reaper of the Bailey nickname. I suppose he's earned that because every defendant he advocates against is found guilty, is that it? Well, if that's the case, we should inform you, Inspector, that in yesterday's trial against Lord Van Zeeks, Mr. Naruhodo secured a verdict of not guilty. Ha! What of it? Oh, well, um, I think... That means that even against the Reaper of the Bailey, it's not impossible to save the defendant. No, you really don't have a clue, do you? What do you mean? What happened to that bloke in the end, eh? He's dead. Ah! Magnus McGilded came a cropper on that omnibus when it went up in flames. So you can't rightly say you saved the defendant, can you? What? what are you saying? Look, if Van Zeeks gets, could get the dirt to stick on everyone, he'd be a miracle worker. That's not how it goes. He doesn't work miracles, he works magic. Black magic. I'd have a good long think about that if I were you. Are we really supposed to believe that? So, he doesn't win every trial, but the ones he loses, he kills the defendant? 
the defendant just dies under mysterious circumstances. That's fucked up, man. <clears throat> Right, well, I filled you in as requested, and I'm very nearly out of chips. I'll be heading back to the crime scene now. We're still carrying out a few investigations there. The Spire Road, you said, didn't you? Where the incident took place? That's correct, ma'am. And if you head over to the holding cells, you can meet the criminal himself. You've branded him a criminal already? as good as is shaking like a leaf in his cell he is i'll give you a ch it'll give you a chuckle if nothing else he's inmate 53 speak to the jailer and he'll show you the way inmate 53 thank you <clears throat> i feel like my voice is like not in good condition today so maybe it won't go super long <sighs> so there's no helping anyone against the reaper the bailey they say Something troubling you, Mr. Narahodo. Tell the truth when I recall the trial yesterday and stop myself from shaking. The idea of facing the Reaper in court again is... Well, if you think it's too much for you, there's no shame in turning the case down. That takes courage, too. I'm not gonna turn it down just because you want to, Sasato. Don't hide behind me! But if the man they've arrested is innocent... You could well imagine he would be shaking like a... Why he would be shaking like a leaf in his cell. And I, for one, wouldn't find the side of that funny. So... If I'm honest, I'm still reeling from the shock of yesterday's events myself. And I'm really not sure if I'll be able to help this man, whoever he is. But I'd like to try, so I think I'm going to make some inquiries. Will you help? Do you really think you had to ask? Alright, hold on. I'm going to close some stuff to see if that helps. Oh, it's thinking. After all, I'm your judicial assistant. Thank you. So then, shall we? Yes! Let's go! Um, let's go talk to the dude first. <clears throat> 19th of February, local prison, cell number 9. So these are British prison cells. Oh, they're ghastly. Feels just like a dungeon. Yes, and having experienced it in Japan myself, I can assure you that our wooden cells feel a lot cozier than these cold stone walls. Oh, don't, Mr. Nadohodo. You're making it seem worse. Apparently, our client is in this cell here. But it's so dark at the back there, I can't make him out. I wonder what he's like. Inmate 53, your legal representative is here to see you. Stop biding in the back of the cell and show your face at once. Am I? My cat, as yet with no name? Call me by a number. It's utterly, unbelievably, and justly unreasonable. I refuse to answer. Mr. Narahodo, what... What do you think is going on here? I have no idea. But I wasn't just hearing things, was I? That tirade of complaints was in Japanese. Whoa! Hello, sir? Nice eyebrows. Um, excuse me, but who- Shh, quiet. All around. Hiding. No, they are. They're watching. Listening. Even now, I... 
You can sense it. Uh, right. So, can I ask you... Who exactly... This man is in a panic. Don't mind me, just pouring some more tea. <clears throat> oh shit, I missed that. <clears throat> there you are. You've come to curse me, haven't you? Don't try to hide it. You're a ghost. A ghost? You mean you know harm, prisoner son? Are you Japanese by any chance? This is... This is... He had my wildest dreams! Sir? Forgive me for that outburst before. I'm so sorry. Oh, it's, uh, fine. We were just a little surprised, that's all. Imagine it. It's been twelve long months since I left my hometown. And here I am, in a frightful fix in a foreign land. So hearing the sweet, sentimental tones of a compatriot's voice here in this damp, dark hellhole was a... Uh, most monumentally moving moment! Who could have guessed that this new client Lord Strongheart assigned us to was would turn out to be a fellow Japanese. Ah. What compassion my fellow countrymen show. To dispatch a first-class lawyer all the way from Japan to defend a mere foreign student. You're also a student, okay. Noble, nurturing, never failing, Nippon! A, a first-class lawyer? First class, huh? Oh, you're gonna be disappointed. Oh dear, I think there's been something of a misunderstanding here. I wonder, would you be so kind as to tell us what happened? Why, you've been detained as a suspect, for example. Why you've been detained as a suspect, for example? Yes. Yes! I can... I will! Shan't stay sullen! And silent! I'm not quite sure I understand what he means, but he seems happy. Yes, he does. I just hope he actually has a good reason to be. Thank you for your cooperation. I am a lawyer, as you said. My name is Ryunosuke Naruhodo. And I am Naruhodo-san's judicial assistant, Susato Migotoba. I am... Visiting student sent here by our government, notably, notoriously named Natsume, Soseki Natsume. Okay. It's always the weird ones. All right, we can't look around. Let's talk to him. Tell me about you, Soseki. Soseki Natsume, son. What an unusual name. Call me Soseki, please. I'm a poet, you see. A writer of haiku. It's something of a nom de plume. A nom de plume? You mean an alias? That's right, Nanohodo-san. No, no, no! Do not be so prosaic! It's much more refined than that! And haiku? That really reminds me of home. Did I hear you say you are a visiting student sent over here by the government? Yes. Yes, that's right. A year ago, I was told to go and study English. First, I had to suffer that misery. And now this! It's beyond the pale! Suffer that misery? Did you not want to study here? No, I mean, 
had an interest in Great Britain for some years, of course. Oh. But! Just because the government tells you to do something, does it mean that you can do it? No! What do you mean? They told me to study English literature. That I could have understood. That is my field. But no. They told me to study the English language. Utterly, unbelievably, unjustly, unreasonable. I see. Only the other day, I was told to send a report about my first year here. It ended a blank piece of paper. Wise words and white washy. Okay. <laughs> you you must be a man of great standing. Oh yes. So I'm often told. And often like to be told, it seems. All right, let's talk about the accusation against you. Could you perhaps tell us exactly why you've been arrested, Soseki-san? I didn't do it. I didn't commit that atrocious murder. Murder? Oh, no. No, no, it's all right. The woman didn't actually die, did she? She was stabbed with a knife. Right before my eyes! Before your eyes? You mean you saw the attacker, so you were actually a witness, but they took you in as the accused because we're back in the olden days, an investigation not that great. Alright, alright. <clears throat> I didn't see anyone. What? <laughs> I'd seen the person who did it. Do you think I'd be locked up in here? I mean, yeah, because, again, investigation not that great, so, you know. Oh, dear. It seems this case is becoming rather complicated. Why me? Why me? Why did that silly woman have to be stabbed in front of me? It's the curse. The curse of London. It's... Incredibly, inexcusably, irritatingly inconvenient! So... Zeki-san was there at the scene, but he didn't see the attacker? It's vital that we find out more about the case. Alright, tell me about the case. It was an accursed evening. Just after the snow had started to clear and heavy... And heavy with the fog. I'd been to the bookshop to buy some books. I was on my way back. To... I was on my way back to my accursed lodgings. Sure, the bookshop wasn't a curse too. Oh, sorry. You sure the bookshop wasn't a curse too? As I was walking along that accursed pavement, I could make out the sole silhouette of another ahead of me. A woman wearing a green overcoat, she was. And just as I went to overtake her... She's quite round, yes. She suddenly let out a scream and collapsed under the cold, hard slabs of stone at my feet. How terrible. I called out to the woman, but... She didn't move. It was like a ghostly, ghoulish, grim graveyard. Slight exaggeration there, perhaps. I was terrified. I had to get away from there. So I ran as fast as my legs would carry me back to my accursed lodgings. So instead of going to the police, you ran back to your lodgings, and that's why the police are like, Oh, that dude's sus. Yeah, that checks out. That's not good. <laughs> I'll say it was shameful, I know, to run away like that. 
tell me Sasaki-san was the victim an acquaintance of yours? Don't be ridiculous! Do you think I know any of these fair-haired English? A young woman at that! I'm indiff- I'm indifferent, shy, timid, unsure! I can't talk to people! I- I see! A young woman unknown to Sasaki-san. And at the time it happened, who else did you see nearby? Did anybody pass you? Regrettably. Apart from myself and the woman, I didn't see a soul. No one! Oh, great. I could have thrown the dagger from afar, who knows? So, the victim was unknown to you and there was nobody else on the street at the time. Hey, daggers are good throwing weapons. That creates something of a conundrum, doesn't it? Huh? What conundrum? Conundrum! What do you mean, Sasato-san? What's the conundrum? Well, if what Sasaki-san has just told us is true, there's something I can't explain. He says that he didn't know the victim and that there was no one else at the scene. Then, he apparently fled without having been seen. I did. I did! Oh! If no one else was there, how did they know it was him? But if that's the case, surely this man has to be the culprit? Ah, you! What did you just say? Nothing! I, I didn't say anything. Oops, perhaps I thought that a little loudly. Actually, that's not what's troubling me. Yeah, who reported him if there was nobody else there? What I was thinking was, how did Sasaki-san actually come to be arrested? So sorry? He didn't touch the victim, and there was nobody at the scene to see him. So how did the police ever discover that he was there in the first place? Oh yeah, she's right. Yeah, that, exactly, that's what I was saying. It... It was him. An accursed great detective. He led the police to me! All the bad luck. A cursed great detective. Oh, could it be our wonderful friend, Sir Erlock Sholmes? Back again. I shall never forget that man's name as long as I live. With his haughty laugh and his self-proclaimed greatness. Brash, big-headed, busybody, be gone! May you be cursed until the end of your days! Hell, Locke, Sholmes! I... I knew it. Mr... Mr. Sholmes! He accused me, too, of being a murderer for once. Uh, once, once? Once upon a time, so I feel you. I feel you, man. I get it. I get it. Well, I didn't expect to hear that name from this man's lips, that's for sure. It was the morning after the nightmare had unfolded on the pavement before me. It was gnawing on its silver, on a sliver of hard cheese, when some men suddenly burst through the door. They started shouting at me, this is the police. Put the weapon down! Yes, it was a thin sliver. And yes, it was hard. But I wasn't eating a weapon! Disgusting, dietary, discrimination devils! You clearly had a trying morning yesterday. And there he was. In the middle of all the policemen, grinning like a Cheshire cat. That hair lock Sholmes! It's it's actually Erlock Hairlock. Erlock? Erlock. He's English. I've since found out that he's a famous name in detection here in London. Yes, the great detective is really well known. And his overly sharp mind managed to deduce my whereabouts, apparently. He 
thinks I'm the knife-wielding madman! Me! This weak, stooped kitten of a man! I wonder what great deduction process led him to this conclusion this time. Do you mean to say that Mr. Shelms' deduction was the only reason the police arrested you? That would be really most unreasonable. Well, um, thing is, I was thrown into a panic when they barged their way in. What did you do? Of course you were. That's only natural. What did you do? I was terrified and trembling and kept throwing question after question at me in an impossible English. Fiendish foreign film flavory! Oh, sorry. Yeah, flim flavory! Flim flam. Well, we are in England. You can't really blame them for questioning you in English. Good point, good point. But in my mind went blank. I... I knew I had to answer, but I didn't know what to say. What did you tell them? So I just kept repeating things like, Yes, I do, and I'm fine. Next thing I knew, I was in manacles. Before I knew it, I was thrown in here. Oh dear, I'm afraid that's hardly surprising. Look, all you gotta do is let the judge know that this man doesn't speak good English and he was scared. Be like, he didn't mean to say those things when the police were yelling at him. He didn't know. I'm, I don't know. I don't know how shit works. Ugh, all right. I'm fine. He's not fine now. Mr. Naruhodo Esquire. Oh, you can just call me Naruhodo. And when we're speaking English, a simple Mr. is more than enough. Oh, yes. Um, all right. Yes, they've really got to me. This country is poisoning my mind. But please, I beg you to defend me in court tomorrow. And tell them what really happened. You'll do it, won't you? Well, um... Why? Why? Why is it so hard to say yes to me? Well, the thing is, I'm just a student like yourself on a study tour. A student? I defended a case in the Old Bailey, only one though. But at this moment in time, I really don't know what I'm supposed to believe in. I'm confused about what justice in this country even means. Oh, Naruhodo-san. I'm not even the foreign student who was supposed to be here. I'm a sort of locum lawyer, I suppose. But, but that armband, that's the mark of a defense lawyer from our great empire. It's a keepsake from the man who should have been here. He was my best friend. A <laughs> keepsake? I know exactly what they're saying about me. Oh, what do you mean? The lawyers, all the British defense lawyers, they won't defend me. Goodness! Why? Why do you say that? For the same reason as you noted before. When it happened, there was only the victim and myself around, and I ran away from the scene of the crime. I'm not a fool. I know it looks as though I must be the culprit. Must be very hard for you, Sosaki-san. And anyway, I'm a student from overseas. Just a foreign nobody to them. Someone not to be trusted. I heard them openly laughing about me before. My earshot without any compunction at all. Any trial for this man would be a waste of time, they said. And of course the foreigner did it. Even had the gall to say, a man doesn't understand half of what's being said anyway. It's awful. I'm wrong! I've studied more English than half of the policemen out there on the streets. I've traveled halfway around the world to learn about these people's country and its great history. But no one here wants to listen to a man with a strange accent. They all hate me. So, 
At the very least, I'd like to entrust my fate to someone who can listen to me in my native tongue. You could do it, couldn't you? When I look into your eyes, I can see it. I can see what you've been through. So, Seki-san, it's just that... Give me a little time, please. Hmm? I'll do what I can for the time being. What do you mean? We shall investigate the case as thoroughly as possible. We can find some clues. It will give us a much better chance, I'm sure. Oh, yes. Yes! Thank you! I'll be here, all alone, waiting for you. Locum student, Mr. Naruhoto Esquire! We should be going then, Na Naruhoto-san. We have a case to prepare for. Look at my armband! Oh, I can't show it to you. There you go. I had to hit the right button. Yes! Yes! The symbol of one of our great empire's first-rate lawyers! Which means, of course, you'll stand by my side! You'll defend me! Oh, no, sorry. That wasn't why I was showing it to you. Then why else would you show them me that?! Whoops, in hindsight, that probably wasn't the best idea. Whoopsies! Alright, moving on. To the Briar Road! Visiting a cold, dark jail brings home the reality of crime and punishment. We still haven't been here yet. I wonder what awaits us. Oh, wait, hold on. The Office of Lord Chief Justice Strongheart in Britain's great capital city, London. Its grandstone architecture and the echoey tick of the vast cogwheels lend it an air of authority. The prison cell where the defendant, Mr. Soseki Natsuma, is being held. It's quiet and the light from the candle is dim, but there's little chance of sleeping. Scene of the crime. Here we go. Nineteenth February, Briar Road. So this is where it happened, Briar Road. Ah, look, Mister Nadahodo. Look at that regulation metal helmet. It's unmistakable. The men of Scotland Yard are here. They're investigating as we speak. That is their job, you know? But Mr. Narahodo, to see one with my own eyes. They were often depicted in the adventure of Airlock Sholmes, but I never dreamed, dreamt I'd ever come to see this close. To a real Bobby's helmet! What? The, the helmet? <clears throat> <clears throat> of course! I have to try one on one day. Well, I hope your hattie dreams come true. What's the Japanese delegation doing here? Oh, Inspector Gregson! Don't worry about that. This isn't on, on the tourist trail, as I'm fairly sure you're well aware. Yes, of course. We're here to investigate. So, you've been to the Holden cells, then? What do you make of the criminal? He's not a criminal, as you put it, Inspector. He's a suspect. <laughs> we'll see about that. You Japanese like to stick together, I suppose. So racist this damn country right now. I'll do what you will. Doesn't bother me. The bloke's in court tomorrow, whatever happens. And the verdict's a foregone conclusion. Uh, the stone-cold air of rejection. Hey, Cart, London at this time of year is full of stone-cold air. That... makes it worse somehow. <laughs> Thanks, Isata. You tried. 
I'm gonna take a little looky loo. It's Robin Williams. I mean, William Robbins. That's one of the officers from Scotland Yard. The police are making sure the crime scene is undisturbed. I have a feeling that if we wander too close, we'll be clapped in irons. I think perhaps you're being a little overcautious. You've done nothing wrong, so we have no cause for concern. Oh no, I'm not getting caught out again. Twice is enough. Twice I found myself in handcuffs despite not knowing a thing about what was going on. Yes, you've had some dreadful experiences. You didn't help me out with them! You believed him and you just let it happen and then you kept throwing me! I'm sure it's that wide-eyed look of panic you're so prone to. It does you no favors at all. Okay. Not wrong there. That's very true. <laughs> Ugh. A patch of pavement must be where the incident occurred. Yes, it's a very wide open space, isn't it? That's true. I can't see anywhere an attacker could have been hiding. Why? What are you foreigners doing here? Ah! Oh, uh, er, we, um, just investigating the scene, officer. Inspired with that mustache fella from Japan, are you? Inspiring? But we had to destroy the evidence, of ya? Get out of here before I give you an agent. Go on! He shoot us away like rats. Yeah, we should give him a wide berth, I think. What a disappointing experience. He, <laughs> what a delightful snowman. I didn't realize the English had a tradition of making snowmen as well. Looks a little creepy though. Oh, it has a scarf, look. You need one if you were out in this freezing cold all the time. I wish I had one. I'm afraid our budget is somewhat frozen at the moment, too. I certainly can't afford a scarf. Surely the snowman here wouldn't miss his. It belongs to somebody, Ryunosuke. Don't do it. But the person who made the snowman certainly would. Exactly! Yeah, I know. You're right. Anyway! Even if I borrowed it, it wouldn't do much to warm my neck, would it? It's covered in snow. That's a Scotland Yard carriage. They use vehicles like that to rush to the crime scenes and cart away criminals. You're very well informed, aren't you? It's long been a dream of mine to ride one of those through the streets of London. Well, just pick up a stone and throw it throw it through one of the windows, then. But that would mean being arrested in order to ride it. Wouldn't it? How else do you think you're gonna get to ride one of those? Still, if it's the only way... Help me find a good stone. No! Susato! No, 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 I wasn't serious. I thought she'd be smarter than Maya, but she's just as mischievous. Oops, nope, that's not what I wanted to do. Oh, look at the windows of that building over there. They're all bricked up. Are you sure they're windows? Yeah, but they're all filled in with bricks. Oh, you're right. I wonder why. Perhaps it's an empty property where nobody lives at the moment. There's smoke coming from the chimneys, though. Oh dear, everything still feels very foreign. There's so much we have to learn about this place. That is kind of weird, though. Like, why? Look at this bike. Oh, a British bicycle, look! Although, the wheel is so misshapen, I'm sure it couldn't possibly be ridden anymore. Someone must have been doing some breakneck cycling. It seems bicycles have become extremely popular in London recently. There's even a movement to change women's dresses to allow them to... to allow, to allow them to ride as well. A bicycle fad won't last. I don't see why anyone would want to ride something like that. You are very wrong, Ryonosuke. Goodness, do you dislike bicycles? No, not at all. I mean, it's not that I dislike them exactly. It's just that any occupation that involves taking both of your feet off firm ground seems reckless. You never tried walking on stilts and falling into a river. I know you'd agree with me. 
You'll have to hire a bicycle sometime. You can sit behind me while I ride you around. That's a rather typical old brick building, isn't it? I'm sure it has a long and interesting history. Well, time certainly seems to have taken its toll on the place. It's crooked and sagging all over. In fact, it looks in a decidedly worse shape than the other houses around here. We must find some cheap lodgings ourselves as soon as possible. Yeah, you're right. Cheap, but ideally with reasonably level floors. I stayed in an old building in London, and I can definitely say that it was not even. It was a definitely- there was definitely a slanted floor in that building. The clouds look so big and heavy in the sky, don't they? And with the dense fog as well, everything looks hazy. Well, it is known as Foggy London Town. I can just make out some sort of spire through the fog. It looks like it's still being built, though. Aha! Yes! That must be the Crystal Tower, being built for the Great Exhibition that's to open in six months' time. Somehow, I feel like we're gonna go there. Apparently, it's going to be very striking. Blazed on all sides and the symbolic centerpiece of the exhibition. It's to be the largest exposition in history, is it? I can't even begin to imagine it. You see all the black smoke rising from the chimneys over there? It says here that in Great Britain, many people heat their homes in the winter using coal. The only chimneys I really remember seeing in Japan were on top of the bathhouse. Do you think some of those houses could be on fire? Not at all. Well, even so... That much thick smoke building up to the heavens is surely going to turn the whole sky black sooner or later. Pollution, yep. Ah, she may be right about that. Pollution! Got the right idea. You get your face away from my tea, cat. There are piles of snow on the pavement here and there, but the road itself is covered in carriage tracks. It seems carriages often travel down by a road. It soon disperses all the snow. I slipped over when I was walking down the pavement earlier. Seems like it would be far safer to walk on the road instead. Oh, but you're rather small, Mr. Narhodo, and dressed all in black. A worry coachman might not see you and you could be flattened by horses. Well, thank you for the rather small concern. I think we've looked at everything. Hmm. I think that's everything. All right, let's talk to the man. Uh, let's talk about Scotland Yard! Tell me about Scotland Yard, Inspector. Ever since I read about it in the Adventure of Our Luck Shums, I've been fascinated by the place. Yard is the most sophisticated police and organization you'll find anywhere in the world, ma'am. Oh, and you know I've always dreamt of wearing a real Bobby's helmet. It does make them look the part, seeing that policeman there with that his helmet on. You certainly get the sense that this is a man who will take no nonsense in his duty of protecting the city. Oh yes, doesn't he look wonderful? Being a London Bobby is hard going, I can tell you. Oh really? First thing in the morning, you know what he does? Goes round and rouses all the laborers on his beat so they can get to work. What? He wakes people up? Yep. Drops on their windows with a long pole. Did it myself, going back a bit. I had no idea. Bobby works for the people of the town. It's just another one of his duties. After that, he starts tirelessly patrolling the streets all day long. Has to cover 20 miles a day. That's the regulation distance. I didn't know they do that, or did that at any time. That's interesting. I can't really imagine how far that is, but it sounds like a long way. Let me see. 
20 miles? That's approximately the distance from Tokyo to Yokohama. On foot? That's, that's definitely taking things a step too far. And when it gets dark, of course, he has the important double light in all the gas street lamps. Oh my! And I suppose in between all those duties, Bobbies are expected to investigate cases as well. And she's after criminals trying to evade the law. I'm not sure you could call it in between exactly. Or alongside, but yes. I expect you to handle those jobs as well. We do have men keeling over from time to time, I admit. Damn, they work hard. I know it's dreamt of wearing one of those helmets, as I said. But it's with a heavy heart. I shall have to relinquish that dream to you, Mr. Narahodo. Hey! I don't have this dream, nor do I want this dream of yours, Susato. Your heavy heart will be my heavy head if you do. Alright, let's talk about the case. It happened around five in the evening two days ago, just there on that open bit of pavement. The victim, a young woman, was stabbed with a blade from behind. Is it right that the lady is still unconscious now? You mentioned that she's being treated in the hospital. When Ira said she was a lady. Truth is, unless she comes around pretty smartish, we won't be able to find out much about her at all. I suppose they, that means they haven't been able to take a statement from her, of course. Did you just shove your frickin' chips in your pocket? That's weird. There's a map of the local area I happen to have on me. You can take it if you want. Really? Are you sure? It's your policy to give lawyers defendant suspects the odd bit of information to go on. I haven't actually accepted the job yet, but still. Thank you, Inspector. We gratefully accept. Local map has been entered into the court record. Street map of the local area showing where the victim was found. Let's take a look-see. Alright, so we're here. That's the brick house. Okay. Anyway. As far as we know, there was no one else on the scene other than the victim and your fellow countrymen. Who did it, do you think? Not much of a head-scratcher, is it? Well, I know Mr. Natsume is also claiming not to have seen anyone else around, but... Just because he didn't see anyone... ...doesn't mean we can be sure that nobody else was present. I'm sorry I have to tell you, but we most certainly can be sure. How? Because, ma'am. The precise moment of the stabbing didn't go unnoticed. It- what? <laughs> we have two very reliable witnesses, no less. Then what makes you so certain that one of them is not the perpetrator? <sighs> it was a typical foggy London day, and your client obviously didn't see them. There were witnesses now? Alright, let's talk about that. Who are these witnesses, Inspector? Fellow and his wife, and a man's one of the most reliable and respected citizens in all of London. A copper from Scotland Yard. Ah, oh, shit. Ah. A, a policeman? That might change things. Just a bit. And this policeman just happened to be here- be there at the exact moment the woman was attacked? Nothing peculiar about that, ma'am. Part and parcel of being a bobby. Catching them bang in the act and all that. Uh, do you think it might be possible for us to ask that policeman a few questions? Be my guess, you can ask him what you like. Court tomorrow. Shit. Oh. <laughs> no doubt he'll be summoned as a witness. Well, that'll give you something to look forward to. That's that. Then he's got no intention of letting us meet the man beforehand, it seems. Policeman witnessed the incident. As your judicial assistant, I must warn you that this could make our job very difficult indeed. Yeah, as a non-judicial assistant, I could have warned me of that too. Oh yeah, one more thing, Inspector. What? The person who led you to the suspect. I hear that was Mr. Herlock Sholmes. 
What are you bringing him for? Was it something I said? The color has drained from his cheeks. Why do you dislike Mr. Sholmes? I need to know. Who did you hear that name from? Oh, that offended. Oh, well, um, it was Mr. Natsuma who mentioned it. He said that Mr. Sholmes was with the police when they entered his lodgings. I'm sure it was the result of one of Mr. Sholmes' inspirational great deductions. Fiddle faddle! Ah! Man's an amateur, and I'm getting sick and tired of him showing his mug everywhere. Oh. I don't know where he gets his information from, but he turns up at the scene of the crime, wanders around spouting incomprehensible rubbish, and before you know it, claims to have solved the case! Yeah, he's quite astounding, isn't he? He, he is a great help to the people of Scotland Yard, though, isn't he? Gibble gabble! Ah! Ever seen this before? Oh, yeah, that's Rants Magazine. A wonderful publication in which the adventures of Airlock Sholmes appears. Yes, well, that wonderful publication, as you put it, sees fit to include several of the Yard's detectives in its stories. The so-called great detective makes a mockery of all of us! You ask anyone at the Yard, it's a misadventure to be included in any Airlock Sholmes tale at all. Well, I suppose there is an element of that. We work our socks off every one of us, only to be frumped by the public thanks to that obnoxious detective. The man's as dangerous to us as Scotland Yard as he is to all of our criminals. That can't really be true, can it, Inspector? Oh, he's a pain in the ass, I can see that. For anyone trying to do real police work. Clearly, the great detective and the police have a complex relationship. Alright, let's talk about the trial tomorrow. That twitchy Japanese bloke goes on trial tomorrow. You going to defend him or not? Well, um... Makes no difference to me, but I will just say this. No London lawyer with his salt would touch that case with a barge pole. Because the prosecution is being handled by the Reaper the Bailey, you mean? No way to save the man now. It's a waste of time trying. It's all a bit strange, though. Sorry? The Reaper he hasn't appeared in court once for a few good years now. Yes, we did hear something to that effect. The only people he usually bothers with are the real scum. The master criminals, the violent ones. Master criminals? <laughs> the violent ones? That's right, he handpicks his victims, only deals with those guaranteed to go to the gallows for their sins. But Mr. Natsume wouldn't hang for what he's accused of, surely? That's just my point, Sunshine. Yes, the young woman was stabbed, but it didn't kill her. Couldn't even say the intent was there. This isn't the sort of case I'd be expecting the Reaper to want to sink his teeth into, for want of a better phrase. Well, it's not exactly a minor infraction, is it? No, there's got to be more to it. Some reason he's taken an interest. Really? What sort of reason, Inspector? You think I can tell what's going on inside the head of that Lord of Darkness? You'll have to ask him yourself at tomorrow's trial. Are we really gonna have to face the Reaper again? The Lord of Darkness, as he puts it? Well, I don't think we're gonna get any more useful information out of the detective. Mr. Narhodo, can I make a suggestion? Oh, yeah. What is it? Well, it seems to me... That we must speak with him about this. By him, do you mean... Are you telling me that we have to go talk to, Sh to Herlock Sholmes? Mr. Sholmes? Yes, Mr. Herlock Sholmes, exactly. I don't want to. Look at those shining eyes. You can't wait, can you? Well, Mr. Dotsman did blame Mr. Sholmes for all this, didn't he? Yes, he did! 
Okay, here's my question, though. If they had a police witness who actually and truly did see the whole thing, like, why did they have to rely on Herlock Sholmes to point them in the direction of where to go make the arrest? Which makes him an involved party in this case. Or are you just going to ignore that? I hope not. I assure you, it's not simply my selfish desire to meet with Mr. Sholmes again. This woman has a way of spinning her selfish desires into a way to that it's like absolutely necessary, but it's like look, I respect and understand the the actual intent and but the, there is like some like, you know well formed logic for doing some of these things, but also I also completely see through you and know that the, the good and logical reason is not why you're suggesting these things. It's because you are very selfish. The trouble is, we have no idea of the man's address even, so how? It's Baker Street! I... Uh, how do you know that? It's in the stories, of course. 221B Baker Street, the most famous address in the world. Oh, I see. Well, there's nothing to stop us from going, I suppose. We better try to find our way there before Sasato-san gets any more excited and unpredictable. Hurrah! I'll summon a carriage! Oh, uh, we're to have a reunion already. Great, thanks, I hate it. With the great detective, Mr. Herlock Jones. Wait, 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 I gotta show you my armband. Inspector Gregson, can I show you this? Am I supposed to know what that is? I've never seen that insignia before. It's worn by defense lawyers in the Empire of Japan. It's a symbol of their profession. In other words, it's a worthless trinket here in Great Britain. Hey! Oh no! It's very important to me! It, it shows my spirit! An English gentleman keeps things like his spirit very much to himself, I'll have you know. Oh. Don't give up, Mr. Nadhodo. It's too late. He's crushed my spirit already. <laughs> That's so sad! That's funny, though. Alright, let's go! Scene of the crime! It's fairly wide street that easily accommodates carriages lined on both sides by tall brick townhouses. The police are investigating even in the spiting cold. Sholmes is sweet! 221 B Bank Street, the home and office of the most famous detective in the world! Can we really visit him, do you think? Oh, pinch me, I'm sure I must be dreaming! That's not why we're going. Alright, let me just pick up the thing that I dropped earlier. Alright. Okie dokie. Let's go go. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Overlooking the street. Goodbye. Thanks again. This is it. The residence of Mr. Herlock Sholmes. of February, 12.53 p.m. Her Sholmes is sweet. Look at all the crap around here. It's like being back in Phoenix's office. That's lovely. So this is where the great detective makes his living. Feels surreal to be here somehow. Is, this is it as described in the stories, Mrs. Sato? Um, Susato-san? She... This girl is floating on cloud nine right now. Many, many famous cases have been solved here in this very room. Oh, I, I suppose they must have been, yes. Never read the story, so it's hard to get quite as excited about it as she seems to be. 
The detective chases the villain relentlessly as he disappears into the fog down in an unlit London street. Oh, the thrill of it! The romanticism! Can't you feel your heart thumping in your chest? No. Can't you, Mr. Nathodo? No, not at all. Not even a little bit. Oh, I... I suppose I can, yes. So if you don't mind... I'll just stand here and soak up the atmosphere for a while longer. Please don't mind me. Uh, she's obsessed. Well... <laughs> It looks like our detective friend isn't home at the present. Uh, excuse me, is anybody home? Oh, do we have a visitor? Oh, it's a girl! Oh shit, it's her! Hello, is it a big new case for Mr. Sholmes? Um, hello. Wait... Aren't you... Oh, how rude of me! I'll go and make some tea at once. I'm sure it's the same girl. She's the one who popped up at the end and is the owner of the smoke gun. Mrs. Sato, did you see the girl who was just here? Oh, yes. Isn't it truly extraordinary? Think that the King of Bohemia came to this very room to ask Mr. Shelms to take on his case. The, the King of Bavaria? King Wilhelm Kotzreich Six. Sigismund von Ormstein, of course. Sorry, I'm drawing a blank. Forget the adventures of Herlock Sholmes for a moment and look over there. The tea's brewed, and I have a freshly baked cake as well. What lovely music. Ah, it's you! I know it. Susata-san recognizes her, too. Yeah, she popped up at the end of the, end of the last case. Ha! Ah, there you are! And taking that with you as well? I was looking forward to the trial run of my experimental smoke grenade launcher. Oh, good day to you. I'm, well, the inventor, I suppose, of that machine. It's the girl who turned up at the end of Mr. McGilded's trial in the defendant's antechamber. I've never met a lawyer from the Far East before. Or you having to get straight to work even though you've just arrived in- you've only just arrived in London. Oh, yeah, it was challenging. Well, try this tea. It's my special blend, you know. Oh, um, uh, thank you. Uh, is tea supposed to look that color? Lips tea. Oh my, what a fragrant yet, me yet mellow flavor. Hooray! It's a winner! I tried blending different leaves designed to alleviate fatigue, you know? You see? Hey! Clever. Thanks. You must be exhausted after your long voyage here, and you have another tick ticklish trial tomorrow. How do you know that? Oh, and you're to defend a Japanese man. I do wish you lots and lots of luck. Um... How do you know all that? Did Mr. Sholmes tell you about us by any chance? Oh, you know Hurley, do you? Hurley? Mr. Sholmes to you, Shirley. Mr. Sholmes was a fellow passenger on the boat that brought us to Great Britain, you see. Yeah, he accused me of murder and tried to arrest me. And even after I was proven innocent, he still fucking put the handcuffs on me. <sighs> hate that man. Not really, but you know. Was he really? Well, I had no idea. I'm afraid Hurley's out on an errand again today, even though he's just returned from overseas. Wait a minute. We have met this girl for the first time ever yesterday after the trial, and only briefly at that. How on earth does she know so much about us? Did she deduce all those things, do you think? Perhaps more to the point. Why is she here in Mr. Sholmes' suite? Oh, silly me. I haven't introduced myself, have I? It's a great pleasure to meet you both. My name is Iris Wilson. Whoa! You're Wilson! I live here together with Hurley. 
Ah, Iris, is it? What a lovely name. Hold on, the wheels are turning. Don't we have an Iris in the first Phoenix Friday's Attorney game? Isn't that... Phoenix's girlfriend, like the actual one with twin sister Dahlia, it wasn't her name Iris? That sounds right. <laughs> I don't remember. What's the matter? No, wait, this this can't be. Did did you did you say that your 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 name is Wilson? What's the matter with Sasato san? Why is she so flustered all of a sudden? I'm gonna just love when things just fall down. Yes, that's right! And what are your names? Oh, um, I'm Yunosuke Narahodo, a lawyer from Japan. Hello. Oh, sorry. I'm Mr. Narahodo's judicial assistant, Susato Mikotoba. It's wonderful to meet you. Lovely! Susie and Runo! Sure, why not? Got it! Susie? And Runo? Ah, uh, there's more to this girl than meets the eye. I have so many questions for her, I don't know where to start. Yes, and so do I. How are you reading my mind? It's weird. I do like this fireplace. It's one of the best things I've seen since we've arrived in the co this country, in fact. Lingering beside the fire and watching the flames flicker and dance in the grate. Ah, it's so relaxing. You can't relax, not when there's so many interesting things we can- things on the mantelpiece. That's your concern? Oh, it's just as it was described in the stories. It is? Yes, exactly. Inside the Persian slipper, for example. And my chocolates are the Elevenses! What? And transfixed by that large jackknife. It's my shopping list for the market. Oh, it's not quite how I remember it being described in the adventure of Erlok Sholmes. Poor Sasato-san, she looks crushed. Tea. Looks like that huge metal chest is being used as a table for the tea and coffee. Seems very sturdy, with an equally sturdy lock. Mr. Narahodo, you mustn't go around opening things. I always have to keep an eye on you, don't I? You're very mischievous. Hey! Other way around! How did you come to that conclusion? Ooh, that chest... contains some of my most valuable things. And that smile tells me you're not gonna give us any clues about what they are. Mystery, mystery shoe, a curious hammer, some mysterious dancing men, a bust of Napoleon. Ah, what an entrancing collection. This is the first time in my life that I've seen a lonely old shoe displayed as an ornament. Oh, those are all mementos that Hurley has collected from his past cases. Really? Even the bust? Yes, that's right. When the mood takes him, he likes to throw it on the floor and smash it to dust. Why is it... Do you fix it afterwards, I assume? The poor defenseless emperor? M Mr. Sholmes destroys it? Yes, and then he buys a new one. Okay. Make it sound like he has the temperament of an insane sculptor. Ah, uh, how entrancingly bohemian of him. Y'all crazy. There's all sorts of uh, sorts on these shelves. Chemistry apparatus, books, papers, and lots of things I've never seen before. It's all heaped up so high, I can't help feeling the whole lot of it is gonna topple at any moment. I keep telling Hurley not to cram so much on those shelves. Good advice. He wanted to look something up in one of those books a while ago. It was so tightly wedged in, he couldn't get it out. Hey, Neonako! 
hello, hello. Welcome on in with the party of one. How was your Genshin stream? How's it going? We're just doing some Ace Attorney. Um, apparently this is Wilson. <laughs> We're in the apartment of Erlock Sholmes. Reasons. You didn't invent and then did the in-game card game? They have a card game now? Alright, is it better or worse than Triple Triad? That's the only real question that there is. It's been in there for a long time. And it's like magic. That doesn't sound as fun as Triple Triad. Or Pokemon TCG. Ah, uh, give me Triple Triad. It was so tightly wedged in, he couldn't get it out. So he went and bought a new copy and said, What the fuck is wrong with that man? Our luck Shelms is crazy, just so you guys know. Man is cuckoo. A violin. A battle card game. Yeah, I, I, I know what that means. It's just... Give me triple triad. I have seen pictures of Western musical instruments like this. It's called a violin, isn't it? Of course it is. Mr. Sholmes is renowned for his violin playing. Oh, really? Absolutely. It's often explained in the stories. It's inspirational, Mr. Nanahodo. Inspirational. Zato's a fangirl. It's weird. I immediately started playing the koto, which was the closest string Japanese stringed instrument I could find. What a shame you couldn't bring it with you to London. Oh, yes. Well... Papa was beaming when I asked him if he would buy me one. But after a while, he asked if I would only practice when he was out of the house. So now it's merely an ornament in my room. That must have been an awkward conversation. That means she was really bad at it. Okay, that's a skull. <laughs> Chemistry? The hell is this thing? What on earth is this huge over-the-top machine? The great analy analystoscope. Analystoscope. It can analyze anything, really, anything at all. That's that's absolutely incredible. It's one of Hurley's inventions. It took him a whole year. He said it was to help him with his investigations. What sort of things has he analyzed with it? Do you know? Well, actually, he hasn't used it for anything yet. Oh. Why not? Apparently, on the evening he finally completed it, it suddenly occurred to him. I don't actually have anything I need to analyze. Oh dear. How about you, Bruno? Do you have anything you'd like to analyze? The only thing that springs to mind is this machine itself. Well, that might come in handy some other time, but not today. Earth is that big black lump over there. Ah, uh, that fascinating thing is called a typewriter. It's a machine that allows you to write on paper without needing a pen. Yeah, they're very convenient. And wizardly quick, too. Ooh, that sounds like it could be very useful for someone like me with terrible handwriting. Yes, they're very useful, Gunosuke. Oh, there's the tea set. What a beautiful English tea set, and so neatly arranged. It's a favorite pastime of mine, a cup of herbal tea in the afternoon. Tea made of herbs? That's right, I grow all sorts of herbs in the garden so I can experiment with different blends. One moment, don't go away. I'll brew a pot of the special blend I came up with earlier today. She looks delighted. I only hope it's safe to drink. Yo, herbs are delicious, it's fine. What is going on here? Ah, uh, that's my blackboard where I note down ideas. Ooh, interesting. Let's see. Black Peter? What does that mean? Don't you want to hear what Iris has to say, Mr. Nanhodo? I'll come back to the blackboard later. All that. 
That's a charming little white shelf and full of charming little bottles, too. Oh, yes, but don't touch any of those. They might explode. What? <laughs> uh, explode? Are they exotic chemicals? Do you use them for exciting experiments? Yes, indeed. And as Hurley always says... Chemistry is an explosive science! Sorry? I agree. A single discovery can trigger an explosion of innovation all over the world. Or perhaps he just meant it literally. By the way, mental note, do not touch any bottle that belongs to Iris. <clears throat> Yo, I dig the music. Alright, I think we've poked around at everything. Let's talk to her. So, Iris, tell me about yourself. <clears throat> it was you that we ran into yesterday, wasn't it? At the Old Bailey? Yes, that's right. You were ever so helpful. Thank you so much. Oh, no. Not at all. I'm so sorry we couldn't have been more welcoming. Though, at the time, we did have a rather large gun pointed at us. Like this? <sighs> ah, thinking back now... You left with Miss Lestrade in tow, didn't you? Oh yeah, that was that awkward witness, Gina Lestrade. Oh, Ginny? Yeah, she's a professional pickpocket. So we found out. It was very naughty of her to pinch my invention like that. Are you referring to that trial disrupting gunlight contraption? Exactly! So I followed her, you see, to get it back. Hmm, perhaps I should think about fitting a self-destruct mechanism into my inventions. This girl is dangerous. <laughs> anyway, I brought Ginny back here after that. So she could apologize to my trusty technician. Sorry, your technician? Hurley, of course, silly. Hurley? Yes, Herlock! Herlock Sholmes! We live here together. I, I had no idea the great detective had such an interesting young daughter? Daughter? Not likely. What? I wouldn't call him Hurley if he was my father, would I? Well, then... What is your relationship with Mr. Sholmes? Well, I expect you found out that lodgings of any kind in London are very expensive. So the solution is to share the cost with a partner, a roommate. Your roommates? I hope you don't mind me asking, Iris, but how old are you? Sorry, I just had a flashback to Phasmo and how people always say, How old are you? And then a bunch of other questions. Like, friendly or angry. Old? She's not that old. Look at that, she just said it like, 10 at, this, at last this year. She's 10 years old. That's not old. You're lying to me. Well, what of your mother and father? Oh, no. They're not around. Oh, I see. I wonder what the story is there. Alright, let's talk about Wilson. Oh, yes, there's something I must ask you. Of course, of course. Go ahead, Susie. I'm a very great fan of the adventures of Herlock Sholmes and... Oh, you have a copy of Rant's magazine! Yes, I read every issue. It's delivered all the way to Japan on a ship. Oh, that's so exciting. My stories are being read on the other side of the world. She writes them? She is, she is the Wilson in the stories. My stories? You feel like the answers are randomized because they can say old on the voice box, but say 17 on the Ouija board? Oh, that's funny. Maybe they're just fucking with you. That's right, Hurley's always solving such amazing cases, you see, and he tells me all about them. They really are quite fascinating. It would be such a shame if I was the only one who ever heard them, don't you think? Goodness! Last night he was telling me all about a new case he just solved on a steamship traveling from a faraway land. Oh no, that was us. 
So I was just in the middle of typing up the manuscript for the next issue before you came. So you... you are the author. Yes, I'll let you in on a secret if you like. I'm gonna call this latest adventure the Speckled Band. Speckled Band? That's certainly very familiar. Of course, I always change one or two details in the stories, here and there. This time, I had the idea of making a venomous snake be the cause of all the trouble. Ow. Oh, that was Mr. Sholmes' first thought as well, actually. Yes, and of course I know that a snake might not be a credible fit for the facts on the case exactly, but... It's a story! Some poetic license is justified to make it more thrilling, I think, don't you? So, do you mean to say... Are the stories about Mr. Sholmes that are published in Rance Magazine... All written by me? Yes, on my wonderful and very modern typewriter! Also, to be more exact, not entirely 100% true. Definitely some fiction going in there. But, but all the stories I've ever read are written by a doctor of medicine, by Dr. Jo John H. Wilson. Zato san's getting more and more worked up. It's called a pen name, Susato. A nom de plume, as we just heard from uh, Soseki Natsume. Ah, uh, yes, that's me. I mean, my name really is Wilson. But what about the doctor of medicine part? That's all true, too. I am a doctor of medicine. Oh, at 10 years old? At 10 years old. Well, that's quite incredible. But, but, but... Dr. Wilson is an English gentleman. Ah, yes. It did alter the setting slightly for the stories to be more compelling. Oh... Well, it sounds a little strange, doesn't it? A great detective with a ten-year-old girl in tow? I... suppose it does, yes. Poor Sato-san. She looks like her whole world has just fallen apart. Don't ever meet your heroes. Alright, let's talk about your deductions just now. <clears throat> um, about before. Yes, yes? What's on your mind, Runo? Do tell me. How did you know that I was a lawyer and we just arrived in London, I mean? Yes. Oh, and that we have a difficult trial tomorrow. How did you know all of that? Oh, that's what you mean. Please, tell us how you did it. Explain every detail. Of course, I'd be delighted. Although, there's really no mystery. Now, let's begin. It's Iris Wilson is proud to present her logic and reasoning spectacular. <clears throat> First of all, I knew already that you were a lawyer, Runo. After all, I met you yesterday at the Old Bailey in the defendant's antechamber. But you also said that we'd only just arrived in London. How did you know that? I observed a passport and travel ticket for cheating from your breast pocket. Oh. So I was reasonably confident that you must have only just arrived in the country. And on top of that... You accepted a case against that particular prosecutor, telling me you were unaware of London's court affairs. The Reaper of the Bailey? I walked right into that one, didn't I? Then I noticed a red ink stamp on the back of Susie's hand. You were given that when you visited the local prison to meet with a suspect, weren't you? Earlier today. Ah. They use those stamps to keep a close eye on comings and goings, you see. I... I didn't realize. And a red stamp is only used for people visiting foreign inmates. So, that told me that even though you had only... Yet only yesterday concluded the trial of Magnus McGilded... Two of you had already had cause to visit a foreign inmate at a local prison. However, neither of you was wearing a particularly sad expression on your face. I concluded that the prisoner was unlikely to be a friend or a relative. This led me to believe that you must have accepted a new case. I... I see. But how could you have known that the trial is tomorrow? 
Well, having barely been home a few hours yesterday, Hurley solved yet another case. It obviously amused him. He told me that he'd caught a Japanese man who was bawling and trembling. Japanese man? Well, clearly that must have been. Mr. Nats... Mr. Natsume! Now Runo has that fancy Japanese sword. I think your outfit is called a kimono, isn't it, Susie? Well, anyway, it was clear to me that you both come from Japan yourselves. So I put two and two together and decided you must be defending the Japanese man Hurley caught. And there was only one conclusion those facts could lead me to. You both came here to ask Hurley about the case. Dude, she's actually smart. <laughs> I like her. Like, actually good deduction skills. There's a note on the mantelpiece that says the man's trial will be tomorrow. Hurley's always stabbing his notes with a knife, you know. He is silly. And that's all there was to it, really. Thank you for listening! I'm Iris Wilson, and that was one of my great deductions. That was a very good deduction, actually. There you go. Sus sus uh Susato, that's the real thing. He's probably just trying to imitate her and her actual good deductions. That's what I think. Well, was it a winner? Were my deductions correct? Spot on. 100%. They... they were spot on. That was amazing, Iris. Truly a great deduction. You even managed, managed the certain something of Mr. Shomes' delivery. Oh, well, I was just copying Harley's style for that. This is really very good news. You can tell us all about the case involving the Japanese men. You will, won't you, Iris? Please? Yay! Let's talk about the case. So yesterday, Mr. Shomes apprehended a Japanese man, you were saying? Yes! Hurley had just arrived back in London after his sea voyage. But the police were waiting for him at the railway station to take him directly to the crime scene. Ah, the great detective is a popular man, it seems. Apparently a woman was stabbed on a quiet street somewhere in town. There were witnesses who had seen a short, shifty-looking, stooped man running away from the scene. A short, shifting-looking, stooped man... Mr. Natsume, beyond any doubt. So Seki-san said that he didn't see anybody else on the street at all. They were probably around the corner. But it seems there were witnesses after all. Oh yeah, plus it was also foggy, so you know, he probably couldn't see that far. Hurley used his great deductive powers to determine the man's address. It was a lodging room very nearby. He went directly there with the police, and what did they find? A short, shifty-looking, stooped man, shivering in fear. <sighs> Mr. Shum's great deduction certainly hit the mark that time. It's very hit and miss. Of course it did. He's a great detective. Mm, I don't know about that one. Still, that means the incident occurred only two days ago. Surely tomorrow is too soon for the trial, isn't it? Definitely. We have no time to investigate properly. Haley says that London is rife with crime. Oh. Scotland Yard is doing its best, but they can't stay on top of it, apparently. Oh dear, I hadn't realized the situation was so dire. That's why they can't afford to spend too much time investigating cases and trying the criminals in court. Staff and money are both short. Crimes are usually pinned on the first suspicious person. Rude? That's terrible! Exactly! You can't do that. That's not right. That's not justice. I suppose it's the harsh reality of the workings of the world's greatest justice system. I... I suppose it is, but in that case, it's really not the world's greatest justice system anymore, is it? I don't hold out much hope for Soseki-san. Thank you for answering so many of our questions, Iris. This has been very informative. Oh, you're most welcome. I've had so much fun. Do you happen to know where Mr. Sholmes is at the moment? As you guessed, we'd like to ask him some questions about this case as well. Ah, oh, well. I expect Hurley's still investigating the scene. Of the case involving Mr. Natsume, you mean? 
Yes, Mr. Nuts. So, uh, Ume? Hurley said he was going to the man's lodgings. If you leave now, you'll probably catch him there. Iris, do you know where those lodgings are? Well, I imagine the police are still investigating the scene of the crime themselves, aren't they? You happen to come across a detective by the name of Gregson while you, when you were there? Yeah, we know Inspector Gregson. Ah, goody. In that case... Give Gregory... Gregsy this from me, would you? If you do that, I'm sure he'll tell you what you want to know. What is this? A five shilling piece and a postcard, it seems. Iris' postcard? A card for Inspector Gregson with a message on the back from Iris. It reads, tell the gentleman in black whatever he wants to know. I trust that won't be a problem? Bribery? This is a five shilling piece, isn't it? I believe it's called a crown. Yeah, and you can train a Scotland Yard detective to do what you want with just a single one. Harris must be the most powerful ten-year-old in the world. How much is five shillings, by the way? What's it really worth? Hmm, well... Probably enough to buy all the chips the inspector could possibly eat in a whole month. Damn! That's greasy. A lot of money. Why does the kid have so much money? Iris's little handwriting is adorable, isn't it? Tell the gentleman in black whatever he wants to know. I trust that won't be a problem? Yes, the handwriting most might be adorable, but the message is ominous. There's no room for sentiment there. I'm sure it's simply the way you're interpreting it, Mr. Naruhodo. Anyway, I do hope the inspector will tell us what we need to know when he reads it. I don't think it will just make him much make him munch piping hot chips until steam comes out of his ears, do you? Well, that wouldn't be an entirely terrible outcome. It would be funny. Yes, I agree. Gosh, this will make the inspector help us, will it? Well, thank you, Iris. We'll give it a try. Good luck, then. I'm gonna return to writing my manuscript, Speckled Band. And I'll be making more special blends of tea, so come back again soon! You'd be delighted. Thank you so much, Iris. Well, Mr. Nodhodo, it's back to the scene of the crime. <sighs> so, somewhat dubious that they would exert any influence over the men of Scotland Yard at all, we headed back to the scene with Iris's curious note and one of the world's heaviest silver coins in hand. To be continued. Ooh, this is a long investigation, it seems. All right, time to save. Yes, 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 yes. All right. That is actually going to be where we will stop for the day. We're going to... This was, this was a short one. We're just going to keep today a bit short. So let's go find a friend to raid. Go over to the twitch.tvs. Sorry, sorry. Way too dank. Way too dank. At least for me. Who dank for me? I think yeah, Dargy just came back, so let's go let's go bug Dargy. How about that? Dargeel Inkling. Calling it short today. I'm a little tired. My voice is not doing the best for today, so we'll pick it up next week, right where we left off. Uh, thanks all for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the stream. The Clouded Kokoro is our current case, and I can definitely see uh, Ryunosuke's clouded heart here. Now he has to... I don't know, like, kind of figure out what he wants to do, and if being a lawyer is truly for him, because his sense of justice is confused by the strange justice system in old... Uh, old old London, old Britain, so yeah, we'll pick it up next week, see how it goes there might be more stream later tonight after I take a break uh, for some Eureka Orthos and FF14, I don't know yet, we'll see we'll find out what happens, we shall see um, but for now, 
Thanks all for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the stream. Thank you to all the lurkers, uh, chatters, VOD watchers, Neonaka for the raid, uh, YouTube VOD watchers as well. I appreciate you all. Have a wonderful evening, and I will see you guys all next time. All right, bye everybody. Thank you. Bye bye.